Edwin Steen hails from Seattle, Washington in the Pacific Northwest region of America. Oh, he may not pick up a weapon himself, sworn to save life and not take it, Steen, also called Lifeline, is a vital part of the G.I. Joe team, so let's talk about him. Before we do, let me say thank you for watching the channel, whether it's your first time here or you're back for more. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the content I upload just like this every few days. Let's jump into the story. Steen started his career with EMS in the Seattle Fire Department. He was there for about half a decade before realizing that if he was helping someone while off-duty and disabled as a result, that he wouldn't be able to collect his pension. And because of this, he decided a change was needed, and so he enlisted in the United States Army, attending the Academy of Health Sciences at Fort Sam in Texas, and was officially deployed as a medic right afterwards. He also earned a black belt in a martial art known as Aikido, one of the same ones that Steven Seagal uses in his movies. As his Battle Corps file card from 1994 says, because of his rescue talent and experience in emergency situations, he joined the G.I. Joe team to aid soldiers wounded during firefights with Cobra. He's called Lifeline, but according to the Ultimate Guide to G.I. Joe, was originally planned to be named either Angel or Last Chance. If he came out now, I would have called him Whiskey, but that wouldn't have made sense in 1986. A later file card tells us that even when not on assignment, he feels he's never off duty and travels around the globe to cross train and stay on top of the latest life support, treatment, triage, and evacuation techniques. Which is often where he is off panel as the Joes conduct DX live fire operations around the globe. He's part of a few important stories, but because of his pacifism, isn't necessarily in the midst of it all. Lifeline's debut occurred not in the main title, but in the fourth issue of G.I. Joe's Special Missions in April of 1987. He, quite literally, dropped in on the franchise as he was depicted on the cover, strung upside down from a tree as the October Guard passed below. This is the issue where Wild Bill was piloting the PBY Catalina with the stolen fire bat in the hold and wanted the black box from it. Lifeline was with Leatherneck, Roadblock, and of course Wild Bill when the October Guard in a Soviet attack helicopter shot them down. And leaning into his pacifism, Lifeline refused to pick up a weapon, which made Leatherneck really mad. Although, as a point of interest, this is very much in line with the Geneva Convention as it relates to non-combatant medical personnel. After they were captured by Sarawak Sally and her pirate crew, Lifeline was forced to fight the October Guard's horror show and, using his Aikido, defeated him and they were all let go. He was also in another issue of G.I. Joe's Special Missions with his Tiger Force team, and this aligned with the following figure wave for Tiger Force. Lifeline was there in issue 67 when Snowjob, Quick Kick, and Stalker disembarked the C-130 that brought them back from Barovia after being imprisoned there for many months. Then, as Civil War broke out on Cobra Island, Lifeline was assigned to Duke's security team. They landed on the island in choppers flown by Wild Bill and Lift Ticket. The Hilo touched down just as a Mamba strafed it with gunfire. Lift Ticket and Crazy Legs were shot and needed evac, and Breaker was hit in the arm too as the and as the rest of the team laid down suppressing fire, Lifeline was there applying a field dressing to Breaker's arm. Later, as additional support arrived, Lifeline and Doc stretchered the wounded out. And later on, the two medics went to the east end of the runway to pull Wild Bill out of the wreckage of his tomahawk. Lifeline was walking down the beach at the close of the Civil War battle when Lady Jane's Arana started fighting each other. But then, the entire team was put in security quarantine, arrested, as they were set up by the jugglers at the Pentagon. In issue 95, both Doc and Lifeline were treating Scarlet, who was in a coma after a bullet struck her head. They were in a C-130 over the Atlantic, headed back stateside from Switzerland. In issue 129, Lifeline was with Stretcher in a helicopter flown by Wild Bill, heading into Barovia, where Lady J, Hawk, Maga, Magda, and the White Clown were trying to make it out. And in issue 172, Lifeline was aboard the USS Flag preparing trauma teams. Wild Bill, always crashing it seems, with Lifeline always saving him, was inbound with a shot Darklon and a shot Lady J. They patched Darklon up enough to hold him prisoner at the pit in issue 181, and Lifeline was there too, analyzing Darklon and found out a way to surgically remove his helmet. He really does love wearing his sunglasses and his goggles at the same time. In issue 187, with the Crytron nuclear device plot foiled, an ongoing saga that started with Darklon a few issues ago, the bomb defused by Tunnel Rat and a rescued Dusty, Airtight, and Lieutenant Falcon's team, along with Pale Peony, ready for a dust-off, Lifeline and Wild Bill showed up in a tomahawk to pull them all out. Lifeline had plenty of wounded to care for after that mission. Issue 193 began the Robert Graves rescue op in Sierra Gordo. Lifeline was assigned to Stalker's Bravo team, and so Lift Ticket put his tomahawk down in a lumberyard just north of Rio Lindo, and Alpha team, who were already advancing on the Terror Drome, where Graves was being held hostage. Lifeline and Bravo team jumped off, quickly setting up a perimeter. And that's when the Rebels, who were actually cyborgs, ambushed the team from the tree line, unleashing RPGs and gunfire on them. 
Bazooka was injured as they made it away from the sawmill, and luckily, Lifeline was on the team on hand with both sutures and a stretcher so the team could carry him out. But outnumbered, outgunned, and with one injured and one non-combatant, the team managed to overcome the rebels using teamwork, strategy, and one nasty Malaysian tiger gate. There's a rather interesting juxtaposition in issue 204. Lifeline was talking with Rock and Roll as they sat in the back of a tomahawk flown by, again, Wild Bill and Lift Ticket into Ollie's stand to pick up the team extracting Dr. Burkhardt. Rock and Roll was complaining to Lifeline about the hot LZ that they were bearing down on to rescue a pacifist Burkhart. And Lifeline, while well, leaning on the door machine gun from the door gunner's seat, said, If your gripe with Burkhart is about her being a pacifist, you're complaining to the wrong guy. This conversation happened just before the tomahawk was shot up by friendly ground fire. As they made it to the LZ, Wild Bill was hit with sniper fire and Burkhart jumped in front of a bullet to save Alpine. Lifeline commented that Wild Bill actually had bone fragments in his bullet hole, and he was about to go into shock. But then the sniper hit Lift Ticket too. Lift Ticket was still in control of the bird, but asked Lifeline to wipe blood away from his eyes so he could see. They made it out, but Dr. Burkhart, who'd been a part of the G.I. Joe story since the very first issue, died. After the Mac and Serpentor fiasco that led to the death of Snake Eyes, Lifeline was treating Sean Collins and his badly burned face in the infirmary at the pit. Lifeline, again in the Tomahawk, swooped in and issued 258 to pick up an injured Sightline along with Bomb Strike, Ambush, and Milo. Sightline had been badly shot by a robotic Dr. Venom. Lifeline did his best field work, but they had to fly in a surgical team from Bethesda along with Dr. Hauser to operate on him. But the damage was too severe and he ended up losing his legs. But Lifeline actually was talking and said that Caselo, their JAG specialist, was getting them to sign security documents first. In issue 262, Lifeline was working with Dr. Claire Hauser in post-op recovery and rehab, helping Sightline get used to his new prosthetic leg, because as I said, they did have to amputate the leg. The prosthetic leg was a gift from Dr. Mindbender, of all people, but he was thankful for them for taking out Dr. Venom. Then, thinking Sean Collins as Snake Eyes, Laura 343 and Cobra actually captured him, holding him in the basement of the Springfield Rec Center as a prisoner. As the Joes mounted up for a rescue op, they were told to stand down. And that's when the entirety of the team requested personal leave. Lifeline was right at the front of the line, ready for that leave and that unofficial rescue mission that was just about to happen. And that's how we leave them for now, until Larry Hama is able to continue with the tales of our real American heroes. Lifeline was also in Action Force continuity, stories which are reprinted in the U.S. as European missions. In Mark of the Assassin from AF Issue 7, Lifeline was with Lady J as Storm Shadow fleed the scene of Dexter's assassination, although this Dexter character ended up being dial tone with a mask on. In Blood Brothers from 1989's AF Issue 10, Lifeline, along with Hawk, Roadblock, and Beachhead, responded as a CG robbed a bank. And then in The Prisoner from AF Issue 13, Lifeline got zapped while trying to remove Destro's helmet. And then the next issue was aboard a whale off the northwest coast of Africa. For the Rogue Delta story in AF Annual 1, Hawk put together two teams to head into the Mekong Delta area of Vietnam to extract a rogue gung-ho. And as well, he was in Action of the Tiger from AF Annual 2 in 1989 that found Lifeline on a team in Saudi Arabia where Duke told him that his Tiger Force they're to go into the country of Jordan. G.I. Joe Yearbook 2 talked about the new season of the Sumbo cartoon. Buzz Dixon described Lifeline perfectly here. Quote, Lifeline, he's a pacifist. He's a conscientious objector. A paramedic. He doesn't believe in fighting and he won't touch a weapon, but goes on missions to save lives. The Joes think he's nuts, but at the same time, never find fault with his personal courage. Unquote. Voiced by Stan Wojno, Lifeline's debut in the Sunbow animated series was with the second season opener, Arise, Serpentor, Arise. Aligning with comic book Lifeline, but not action figure Lifeline who used weapons, animated Lifeline is a pacifist, as Dixon outlined in the quote I just said, and he's the son of a minister. On the show, he was shown without his sidearm or his knife, although he did wear the rest of his V1 figure's gear. In the episode Million Dollar Medic, the Van Mark yacht was destroyed when a Cobra Night Raven crashed right into it. Lifeline jumped out of the Tomahawk to save the Van Marks, and that's when Bree Van Mark, the daughter, became infatuated with Lifeline. She was hitting on him pretty hard, but he had to treat his team, so he turned her down. Back at the pit in this episode, Lifeline also bandaged up Mutt's partner, Junkyard, who gave him a big lick as a thank you. Bree ended up sending Lifeline a new uniform, complete with an ascot and a leather doctor bag, and she even wanted to give him a fleet of Rolls Royce ambulances. But Baroness used the ambulances as Trojan horses to get a platoon of bats on base. Bree also wanted to give him a laser-proof 24 karat gold helicopter. And after a full-scale assault on the base, spurned on by those bats, was repelled, they thought that Bree was actually working with Cobra. 
then she got kind of like suicidal and wanted to disappear, stole a tomahawk, but Lifeline jumped on the side of the tomahawk as she flew away. And it turns out that they weren't in cahoots with Cobra, but Cobra was trying to get to the Van Mark Advanced Weapons R&D projects and using Bree and her relationship with Lifeline to get to them. Bree flew that tomahawk with Lifeline on the side to their hunting slash ski lodge on a snowy mountain where Cobra ended up attacking, but Lifeline, using non-fighting tactics like a gasoline firewall, did his best to repel their attack. A team of Joes used the smoke from his fire to find the lodge and save them. At the end of the episode, they made out. Well, Bree and Lifeline did, not the others. In Cobrathon, which was the next episode, Lifeline fell in a piranha pit and was captured along with Sci-Fi and tortured in front of a live audience. Lowlight was the one who saved Lifeline from being bitten by an actual pair of Cobra snakes by blasting them with a fire extinguisher. And in G.I. Joe and the Golden Fleece, Lifeline was sent back in time to ancient Greece, and there was this funny scene where Sergeant Slaughter stuck his finger in Lifeline's face and said, What's the matter? Are you surprised I went to college? He was fixing up ancient Greeks who then thought he was Aesculapius, the god of medicine, and whose snake and staff make up the medical symbol today. In an episode called The Most Dangerous Thing in the World, Dr. Mindbender accessed the DoD personnel files to promote three Joes, Lifeline, Shipwreck, and Dial Tone. Shipwreck ordered a tank exercise that went sideways, and he was often seen in the series inside the Tomahawk as the Joe teams made their mission ingress and egresses. He also showed up in G.I. Joe the movie where he was with Flint and later with the Rawhides as they went into an ice dome. Lifeline's V1 figure debuted in 1986 and deviating from his animated and drawn versions came with, along with his case, backpack, and mask, a silver M1911 Browning. In 1988, Lifeline joined Tiger Force. And in 1991, Lifeline was available through the mail, but not through Hasbro Direct. This mail and offer was through Kellogg's Rice Krispie Cereal. The V1 lifeline came with a drop leg thigh holster, and Kellogg's didn't want weapons, so they gave this lifeline the legs from the Frostbite figure and a repaint. It was a departure from his V1 figure, but actually brought him the closest in alignment with his pacifist self. In 1994, he was part of the Battle Corps and came packaged with the supercharged grappling hook launcher and an auto-feed grenade pistol. In 2002, Lifeline came with Sideswipe, however his name was changed to Greg Scott, and Greg Scott is from Spring Valley, New York. The 2002 figure was a limited release, only going out to some shops and online stores. And there are a few people with the name Greg Scott, but the one most relevant to this figure was the design manager at Hasbro Toy Group from 1991 to 2004 named Greg Scott. So this figure is named after him. Greg Scott had also designed the Easy Bake Oven and worked with food vendors, so he's probably also responsible for the Kellogg cereal deal on Lifeline 2, as it happened in the first year he was on board with Hasbro. Greg became Sergeant Lifeline in 2004 for the Anti-Venom set exclusive to Toys R Us, and Lifeline was back to being Edwin in 2011 for the 30th anniversary line, and his last version came out at the 2015 G.I. Joe convention where he was back with Tiger Force and in a box set opposing Destro's Iron Grenadiers. And with that, we find ourselves at the end of another video. That's a wrap on this one, my friends, the story of G.I. Joe's Lifeline. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.